Frank Worsley. I was originally the captain of the ship The Endurance, which took me and 27 other men to the Antarctic wasteland. The complete expedition set out under Sir Ernest Shackleton from South Georgia in December of 1914. Shackleton, Thomas Crane, and myself returned to the whaling town in South Georgia in May of 1916. I believe it was our sheer will that allowed us to escape the freezing conditions of the very far south despite attacks of fate. Exactly one month after the ship was entrapped, Shackleton gave the order to give up attempts to break free. We spent the long winter in the ice, but we never gave up hope. We kept ourselves busy. I do not believe we ever thought we'd have to give up the ship and our plan. During the summer, the Endurance survived many pressure attacks from the flows that surrounded the ship. It seemed as though we were invincible, and it only gave us new heights to our confidence. Unfortunately, in late October, fate again tormented us with a very long pressure attack. This time, we knew after hours of unsuccessfully working to relieve the pressure, this was the end of the Trans-Antarctic Expedition. We unloaded the essential items and set up a camp on a flow near the ship. Several return trips and a couple camp moves later, our will to cross the pole was gone. Instead, now we only had the will to return home alive. We knew this would not be easy. About mid-January of 1916, we had a stroke of luck. The flow we were camped on began being pushed away by very strong gales towards the north, the exact direction we wanted to go. It was as though our will to find land northwards had encouraged fate to give us the winds. Though the gale lasted for many days, when we came to a stop there was no way to launch a lifeboat savage from the Endurance. Ice covered the water from late January to early April. Fate again changed when the ice finally opened up. Shackleton hurriedly ordered the boats launched. We had recently retrieved the last of the boats from one of our older camps, and it turned out to be a stroke of luck as we most certainly needed all three boats for the trip. I will not go into all the details, but in my opinion, if we had not had as much will to make it to land as we had, we would have most certainly perished that day. I was in command of the Dudley Docker, one of the two smaller boats. There were eight men on the Docker. After an incredibly taxing day, we reached the flow and set up a new camp. That night, however, fate decided to attack us. In the middle of the night, the flow cracked right underneath one of the tents. Shackleton had to pull one of the firemen from the wreck, but everyone was fine. However, the crack seemed to have a will to make us suffer because it opened wider and wider, cutting Shackleton off from the rest of us. Thankfully, he was retrieved by one of the boats. We launched the boats again, and after several days and disappointments, we realized that our wounded had will had finally paid off. We reached Elephant Island. This was not without incident. Two nights before landing, the docker was separated from the other two boats. If not for the determination of the other men on my boat, I would have most certainly given up. As it was, I was exhausted. Alexander Macklin, one of the surgeons, took my post at the tiller while I stretched out for some rest. I am most ashamed of this, for when we were not far from Elephant Island, the men were unable to awake me for some time when a large and dangerous wave was coming. I was awakened right before the wave hit, but it was too late for me to be able to steer the boat clear of the wave. Another wave hit, and despite our mutual wariness, all of us bailed the water out of our lifeboat. Our will most certainly helped us as we battled fate to save ourselves from sinking. By a stroke of luck, we ended up finding our companions along the shore. It was an amazing feeling to once again be on land. We spent the first night where we landed. Shackleton had us move early the next morning. My small lifeboat had several problems along the way, but we fought without giving up until we reached a new area of the island. Fate seemed to hate the docker more than either of the two other boats. We certainly suffered more vicious attacks by the treacherous water. In late April, it was announced that Shackleton would take five other men on an expedition to find aid. Again, it seemed as though our will would not let us simply stay on a somewhat secure place, but push us home. It was decided that Shackleton would lead Harry McNeish, Timothy McCarthy, Thomas Crane, John Vincent, and myself on this journey. Finally, the James Caird, the most seaworthy of the three boats, was prepared and we were ready to leave. I started at the tiller and Shackleton would relieve me at times. We tried to stay positive, but it was very difficult. We had hundreds of miles of open sea to cross, and in addition to that, we had to navigate through ice first. Fortunately, it did not take too long to navigate our way through the flows. That first night, Shackleton sat with me while we kept an eye for stray ice. He told me several things I do not remember well, 
but I do recall that he, I was rather surprised to hear how anxious he was and in need of support he was. I was sure that if anyone's will would carry us through this mess, it would have been Shackleton's seemingly unbreakable will. It did not help my hopes to see him so uneasy. After hurricane force winds and other obstacles, we were one third of the way with, through with our journey. However, we had one large problem. Ice was beginning to form on the ship. Several times men were sent to knock it off. One day we realized the entire cared was covered in it. Fate continued to throw challenges at us. It was wearing down on our will, and I could tell. Almost as soon as we had finished clearing the boat, fate took our anchor. This forced us to immediately get on the move again. Not long after that incident, I was checking my sextant. We were halfway to South Georgia. To do this, we had crossed a little over 400 miles, and we were not going to give up yet. Another night, when my watch had just been relieved and Shackleton's had taken over, fate decided it would get rid of us once and for all. A giant wave overtook the cared, but we immediately flew into action, bailing out the water. We worked in a frenzy, full of determination and will to survive. It took hours, but as some hoosh was being prepared, it was discovered that the wave had spoiled our water. It was undrinkable, and our moods quickly fell sullen. But ultimately, we got the water out. We felt as though we were immune to fate's whims after beating such an attack. Not long after, however, South Georgia was sighted. My thoughts were that fate could not keep us down because of our strong will to reach South Georgia. A couple more days of battling wind, sea, and rocks had to be endured before we were able to land. That was one of the happiest times of my life because we found a clean water minutes after we'd landed. Fate could not defeat us. But fate seemed to want revenge. That night, fate ruined the cared stiller. There was no way to save the boat. Shackleton made the decision that three of us would have to walk to the nearest whaling town. Shackleton, of course, would lead, and Crean and I would accompany him. Before setting out on our journey, we spent a few days regaining the strength we had lost. It was a demanding expedition. However, we knew we could not give up after coming so far. If anything, our will to survive was stronger than ever. It also seemed as though fate was leaving us to battle the land alone. It took several long days of walking in deep snow at high altitudes, retracing our steps, and even one incident of being forced to slide down the slope until we finally laid eyes on civilization again. I pulled out four safety pins I had kept all this time and did my best to fix my pants. I somehow managed to have some amount of vanity left after our incredible journey. When we arrived, we cleaned up and rested for the night. The next morning, we took a larger boat to retrieve McNeish, Vincent, and McCarthy. They barely recognized me when we picked them up since I was clean shaven. Unfortunately, it took almost three months to get the other 22 men off Elephant Island. Luckily for me, I did not go on this rescue mission because fate had once again made the journey difficult. It was certainly a very happy experience when Shackleton finally returned with Frank Wilde and the rest of his men. It is my belief that it was our will that brought us safely home despite fate's constant interference. Fate took the endurance, trapped us on floes and islands, but we beat it. We had the natural human will to survive, and it was obviously stronger than anything fate could throw at us. Thank you.